Coloured pencils, to me, are really quite a challenge. Although they've been seen as a fairly simplistic thing, they're quite complicated in terms of layering colour uh, and what you can do with them by putting layers on and indeed pulling them off again is really quite interesting. I began visual arts pretty much from, from the time my parents gave me a set of Derwent 72s. My formal training, of course I did, I went to Fort Street Girls High School and did first level art back then. Then went to Alexander Mackey and did what's now a double degree, a teacher training course, and you went to the National Art School as well. Many years later, in 1981, I had the good fortune to come up to Newcastle and live here and you know, I applied for and was accepted into the 1981 the first plant and wildlife illustration course. The best thing was I spent a year and they said draw every day, look at what you're drawing, draw it and keep a diary and keep developing your work and it was just that formal discipline that we didn't have in Sydney. That led to, of course, recently me having done a PhD in natural history illustration. I'm not a natural history illustrator, but I do very much use their processes of observation, collecting, uh, and really talking about the world. Lots of different kinds of coloured pencil have been developed and I think that, that attention, that love of detail you can actually achieve as well as a broad range of different textures I'm starting to be able to achieve. I just don't think you can do everything as much as you try and you try lots of things when you're a student. So you have to really, you know, you have to figure out what is going to speak for you. When and a lot of artists would get to this point. When, when I'm working, you, words stop and you start to think in terms of contour and colour and all these, these different sorts of things and the right brain starts to sort of do a little bit of weight lifting and it's, it's, it's just such an amazing space to be in, you know, and you, you get used to doing it so much that you become a bit incompetent when you go out into the real world, you know. It's, <laughs> I can't talk anymore. <laughs> For better or worse, it's using coloured pencils has enabled me to just form what seems to be something unique. The combination of coloured pencil is quite often seen as being a you know cutesy thing and childish and you can colour in but they only use one pencil at a time. I've got to use a whole bunch because you mix the colour on the page. Being able to manipulate spaces with such detail, I just really enjoy doing it. So um, and that that I guess is what makes my work a little bit different from other people, the material and that sort of what could be described as a scientific illustrative approach. It reflects the world around me clearly. Yes, the imagery is, it can be a little bit nightmarish. I have the worst nightmares, I've got to tell you, but um, it's, I think, uh, of course, life experience is bound to make you a little bit um, satirical, shall we say. I've taught art history for many years and mostly European art history. And I just find the history of what human beings do to each other and the world is quite appalling. The large work that I'm working on at the moment, which began as a, a multi, a, a big panel, the flight of the black dog, and I've I've changed it, and it's metamorphosed into uh, something that I'm just sort of thinking. Um, I'm probably going to call it murky depths, because I mean, as you get older, you know, you think, oh gosh, 
people talk about depression and all that sort of stuff. And I think about all the times people very close to me have been depressed and how you sort of stiff, stiff up a lip, lip, get through it. But it's terribly, terribly hard. It's very, very hard. And why shouldn't we talk about hard things as artists? Why shouldn't we talk about the awful things that we do to, to our fellow human beings and to the world? We're doing a good job on wrecking that too. So it might be dark, but I'm just holding a mirror. In my opinion, I'm just holding up a mirror to other people and they they will people will always make of it what they will they will bring their own experiences and uh, their own thoughts to an artwork it doesn't matter what you tell them I did a whole uh, the flashcard series that I showed up at Maitland hide and seek there are over 400 small images in that no one person had the same uh, response to my reason for making these small one small artworks they chose a few and wrote about them they were all different they brought their own experiences their own stories it's very much holding up a mirror I've got to also have developed a quirky eye I think because I love the magnificence and of frailty and imperfection in you know the whole cycle of nature isn't just the beautiful thing what I like to try and do is just really get that balance I mean nature isn't that one perfect moment is it it's it's the whole thing the birth the death and 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 the slow rotting getting a bunch of flowers I just almost cry but I used to think oh but they're gonna die and I've started keeping them and drawing them so I can keep the yeah, and I find them very, very interesting to look at anyway. It's, it's just trying to reflect on the complete life cycle is, uh, that I find very interesting. And that's also that whole business of the spiritual, the mental, the, you know, finding people like to find calm and we all have to be happy, but just a quick grab will do and, and just get back in the studio is I think the best that one can achieve. Rather than recurring, I suppose they are recurring themes in that they, it's a development of widening, trying to widen our perception to things that you would normally overlook. Things that are in this, yeah, you, they sort of normally, they, you might see them out of the side of your eye. I guess, it, you know, in terms of values, I, I'm, I'm just really... Um, disappointed that we're headlong into this stupid financial system where it's growth, 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 expendability, expendability. My, my work's trying to address that and just trying to say to people, you know, look at something else. Look at something else inside yourself. Take, take a look at something else other than yourself is perhaps the best way of saying it. I started using multiple uh, multi-panelled works um, pretty much at the beginning of doing my PhD. Uh, I, I had done a large fish work, which is now part of the Lake Macquarie collection. It's, it's interesting because I, I, it's nice to play one image off another. Even when I was doing small fixed works, I'd be putting them together in suites because they'd play off each other and they'd try to get people into understanding a story or a point of view. There's another interesting thing about doing multi-panel uh, multi works such as I'm currently doing, and as opposed to doing large works, um, the large fixed images it's sort of, they grow, and you, you, they go in and out. But the multi-panel works, they're, they're a bit of a tricker. They're really interesting. You can make them as big as you want, and you can keep changing them around and moving in and out. And, and, and they're, they're sort of, they have this organic growth of their own. And, you know, pretty much uh, I'll just do a little, for a three metre image I'll just do a rough thumbnail about that large know what I want to do and then just get right into it and then really play around and shuffle around so 
it, it doesn't, it's not as limiting as the fixed single panel works, which can be very, very hard. They're all hard though. Everything's hard. <laughs> there is more of that element of play with multi-panelled works, which I really thoroughly enjoy. Now I'm working quite large all the time. You'll be able to go into a section of my work and see a whole new story going on. It can be a, a, a little idyllic scene playing out or, you know, contexts are clashed. You've, you've got to, it, always there's insects there eating away at, at all these ideas that we have formulated. So um, that idea of, I like that idea that people can uh, try and take the time to move through the work too and see, discover all these things. It's, it's <laughs> I do describe it as a where's Wally at times because it is so complex. Working on larger scale has such an element of unpredictability about it. It's always going to be a surprise of some sort when you see it in any space. Even if you have a large studio, you still, it's, it's going to be, a large work will be dwarfed in different ways in different spaces. I've always wanted to pull people into my work, which is why I don't use any glass. Even though the work's on paper, um, I've really since, I guess the last 30 years at least, I've sealed them with varnish and that way you're not, the, the viewer's not excluded by the use of glass. I just, I find it very, very anticlimactic to see one of the works behind glass on a mount with a frame that someone else has done. I, I, I just have to have a little bit more um, immediacy uh, in my work than that to include people, to bring them in. It's really funny, you know, I think I'm just beginning my art career, so to speak. I've worked all my life as a teacher and in galleries and it's only been the last couple of years that I've even said no to teaching. And I've, every day, as many days as possible, I've attempted to go to the studio and work. I know that I'm nowhere near finished. <laughs> it's, I know that I just want to push the medium as far as I can and be as honest as I can. I'm really interested in continuing large projects in, in spaces that are quite, uh, which suit my work and with people that are happy to deal with my work and the difficulties of hanging them. I, I just sort of, I, I want to get right out of that public, uh, out of the uh, selling to selling artwork to people. I'm just almost making impossible projects, I guess, impossible to own. And that's good because they are what they are and I want to own that. Thank you.